Welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll begin an exploration of the concept of a vector subspace. So when we say a subspace, and this is what people usually mean when they talk about a vector space, because if a vector space is all of the uh, vectors that have m real entries, that's the coordinate space or the real space, and a subspace is a linear subset. And what that means is that first is that it's a subset, which means suppose we have a double barrel W, what we mean is that every member of W is also a member of a, that bigger space we're talking about. And then by linear and closed, we mean that for all U vectors that are in the subspace and all V vectors that are in that subspace, we have, if we take a, a, a real number times the vector u, and we take a, a possibly different number times the vector v, that that linear combination is also in the subspace. So when we say linear and closed, this is the linear part. It's a linear combination, any linear combination, and then closed means it's in the subspace. And usually, usually what we have is a, and this is called in mathematics, a proper subspace. And what a proper subspace is, that's a straightforward concept. What we mean is that the double-barreled set W is strictly contained in the larger set V. So informally, what we can say informally is um, there is some vector, uh, let's say, u that is in the bigger space and u is not in the subspace that we're looking at. So example, suppose we have a vector which is 1, 0, minus 1, and we say any constant multiple of that is in a vector subspace. So the question for you is, can you find a vector that is in a bigger, subs a bigger space, let's say the space R3, um, the space of all vectors that have three real entries, can you find a vector that is in V and that is not in W. So that's a, that's a simple problem that I'm sure you can figure out. Now, what is the geometry of this? Well, the geometry is that it has to still be, so a subspace is, is a vector space, right? So suppose that we have coordinates, so we have a 2D example, and suppose that we have an infinitely extending line that goes through the origin. And this would be an example of a vector subspace. And the reason is that if we picked any vector that was on this line and we multiply it by any real number, so if it's positive, it would increase this way. If it was negative, it would get flipped over and increase or decrease this way. That any, any real multiple of any vector that is on that line will also be in that subspace. Suppose that we look at something like this. And the question is, would that be a subspace? No, it can't be. And the reason is that one of the things that we can do is we could take a vector and then we could multiply it by zero and that has to be in the subspace. And if I take a, a vector such as this and I multiply it by zero, it goes boom over to the origin and it's no longer in. So this is not 
a subspace. And what are some higher order examples? Well, we might, for example, imagine that we have a three-dimensional coordinate space and that what we have, I'll just draw a part of it, is suppose that we have a plane that we draw this way and that this will say that any vector in that plane, if we take any two vectors in that plane and we add them, it stays in the plane. How does that work? Well, let's suppose that this folder represents the vector subspace. If I take, and, and let's suppose that this corner is the origin. If I take any vector here and any vector here and I add them, I'll get a, a new vector and that vector has to lie on this folder. It can't jump off and it can't pop backwards. It has to be on that folder. And so what that means is that a one-dimensional subspace has the geometry of a line that goes through the origin, and a two-dimensional subspace has the geometry of a plane that goes through the origin. And this idea of must contain the origin is critically important. It's an absolute essential because the zero vector is a member of every vector subspace. There's an additional concept. We'll We'll introduce it now, and we won't really be able to explore it fully until we get to further sessions, but that's the idea of a dimension. And dimension of a vector space. Now, here we're going to use English carefully, and what we mean is the word dimension applies to a vector space. The word the way that we'll use it, the word dimension does not apply to a vector. When we want to talk about a vector, we talk about its size, and that's the number of entries that are in the vector. When we talk about the dimension, we mean how big is the space. And informally, we'll in a later session, we'll, we'll get formal, but informally, it's the minimal the minimal number k of vectors needed to, I'll put this in quotes because we don't really understand this word fully yet, needed to construct the vector space. So let's say, let's take an example. So um, let's suppose, suppose that V is all um, vectors that have two entries and it's of the form. So let's suppose that the form of this is a vector U has to have the form of its first entry can be any real number and its second entry is required to be two times that real number. Does this satisfy the closed linearity of the requirement of being a subspace? And that is, if you had another vector v, and you had, and it followed the same rules, and it was y and 2y, could you take any scalar multiples of those, add them together, and get a get a vector that obeyed this rule? Yeah, you can. So what is the geometry? So the geometry, if we consult a diagram like this, is this, this is a, a line that goes through the origin and it has a slope of 2. So this is a constructive way. I'm giving you a rule by which you can construct vectors that are in the vector space. A restriction form of this is u is in the vector space I'm trying to construct if 
and only if. And let's suppose we say that the rule is that u, the dot product of u with the vector 2 minus 1, has to equal 0. And you can work out, if you let the entries of this vector be u1, u2, you can work it out. And what you'll, if you work this out carefully, you'll find that this restriction form of the definition of our vector space and this constructive definition result in the same vector space.